Yo, 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 what up, what up, what up? This is Toby with O-Line Security, and we are back with another lab from Cert Master for Security Bus 701. Y'all, if you've been liking these videos, if everything has been useful to you all, please make sure you're hitting that like button for us. Help us out with the YouTube algorithm. Also, make sure you're subscribed. Tell a friend to tell a friend to subscribe so we can all learn together here in this lovely community. All right, this lab here is a pretty cool lab, straightforward. We're gonna be talking about hashing and salting. If you're not familiar with hashing by now, it's used to validate the integrity of data. Right, salting is a technique that we use to hash our password. Right, if you're not familiar, your passwords are stored on your system. They're stored in different system services, but the passwords are not stored in clean text at in clear text. At least they shouldn't be stored in clear text. They should not be stored in clear text, also known as plain text. They should be ciphered. It should be a cipher tag. Right, that means we would store your password as a hash. We take your password, take it through a hashing algorithm, and then store the hash. Throw away the clear text password also what we can do to make the hash stronger the password hash stronger is um, combine it with the salt all right we're going to combine that password with assault if your password is god rules what we would normally do is convert god rules into a hash the hash would look very confusing something like that but it would be very long about 128 bits long right or we can do this we can take your password of God rules, add a assault to it. Let's say our assault is cat. Assault is just random characters that you know. And then we would hash all of this together instead of hashing the single password on its own. We would hash it with the salt so we would get a more complicated hash. All right, that's just for password security. So let's go ahead and log into the system. All right, so they do want us to browse to another website. I already have it opened up on this on my end. We're not gonna do too much with this first website, right? Here it is. It's it's not bad, right? Some information about some digital forensic testing tools, right? It, we're not gonna do too much information with it right now in this lab. Uh, we may come back and talk about it a little bit more, but we're gonna go ahead and skip that part. Now, on Cali, here's this CD that we have to load up. So we're just gonna right click this and hit mount volume. If you don't see the CD here, just come over to resources tab right here and make sure that the CD drive is, is located, right? You have the student resources set. It shouldn't be no media. It shouldn't be set to a student resource CD. All right, we're gonna come back to instruction. We're gonna open up the terminal now to access the files on that CD. We can do that by doing ls forward slash media forward slash CD ROM. Right, and that's CD-ROM, C-D-R-O-M-0. Right, you can see the contents in this file. We're gonna copy this over to our downloads directory. So we're gonna do the same command. We're just gonna do copy, media, CD-ROM, zero, forward slash. And I didn't mean to say the same command, but the same syntax right here. We're gonna hit space, forward slash root, forward slash downloads, Oh, and don't forget the wild card back here. The wild card so we get everything under the CD ROM. We want both of these files to be copied over to our roots downloads directory. So we hit enter, ls downloads. We can see that stuff here. Let's just go into the downloads folder, do CD downloads to change directories into the downloads folder. I'm going to clear my screen with control L. And let's take a look at these instructions. All right, sweet. <coughs> Right, you want to verify the files, verify their file sizes. That's one way to validate the integrity of a file, right? They should be the same file as listed on the website or whatever the resource is providing. All right, now what we're gonna do here is unzip this file. We're gonna unzip it with the unzip command. Just type unzip, then the number four and hit tab. It will spell out everything for you. All right, that is being unzipped. Go ahead and score. Making sure I'm not missing anything. Okay, cool. Now, to answer this question here, it's the same information that's on one of those on, on the website they want us to go to. All right, to answer this question, what is the bit length of MD5? MD5 is one of the hashing algorithms. There are a bunch of different hashing algorithms. They're listed right here. We have MD5, SHA-1, SHA-224, 256, 384, 512. All right, we have the MD family and the SHA family. You can see how long the hashes are. All right, every, the SHA hashes are obviously longer, which means they're stronger than the MD family, right? The longer the hash, the better, all right? It makes it more confusing. Now, 
there's you know people still use md5 right we'll talk about why they some people may not want to use it but we're going to select 128 for the md5 bit length it is 128 score that we can see our extracted files we're going to ls dash l we can see the extracted files in this folder we'll do a ls dash l four tab right four hit the number four and then the tab key and then you can see these extracted files here that were inside of this folder right this was the zip file we unzipped it into this folder here are the contents from this folder all right cool now we're going to get the md5 hash of this right here we are going to calculate the hash ourselves. the hash was provided right so just imagine <coughs> We downloaded this from the internet. We downloaded this from the internet. Now we have that file on our system, right? We have those files on our system. Part of these files is, is the hash, right? The company we downloaded it from, they gave us the hash, right? Let's say the hash is ABC. They gave us the hash of these files, right? So we can verify this program. We can ver validate the integrity of this program to how by getting the getting our getting a hash ourself of this file we're going to get a hash ourself of this file and compare this hash with the hash that the company provided if the hashes match it's the same file if the hashes don't match it's not the same file right that is the concept of hashes and integrity if it's not a familiar concept to you if you're not using this in a use case scenario in, in your in your life today even at work then I highly recommend that you sign up for our Security Fundamentals Academy. Hashing is a very, very, very important part of that academy, and it's very, very crucial part to security as a whole. Okay, so that's one of the techniques we use to validate programs we download from the internet, right? We have this program right here that we downloaded it, and it also came with a hash file. So we're gonna go ahead and get our own hash of this file and then compare it with what the company provided. We wanna make sure that the hash is matched. So let's get the hash of that file itself right now. We can do that with the MD5, MD5 sum program, right? This tool right here is gonna give us the hash of a file. So we wanna get the hash of this DD file, right? So we have to give the folder that the DD file is in, that's the folder. And then we're gonna give the actual DD file, boom. And what we're gonna do is add this hash. We're gonna add the hash to the hash file that was provided so we can compare everything in one file All right we're going to add the hash to this hash file All right so we just added it to the hash file now we're going to open up that hash file because it already came with the hash from the company and we just added the hash from this file that we just took so here we go Right here is the hash that was provided by the company. Here is the hash that we just took. Right here is the hash that was provided by the company. Here is the hash of the file that we just took. Right. I just want to run this command without putting it inside of a file so you can see it. Right. Just running it without putting it inside of a command. This is it right here. This is the same command right here that we ran above, but we're not outputting it into a file. I just want you to see it on the screen so you know this was the hash that we got this was the hash that we got by using this command md5 sum hey give me the hash of this file and then put that hash inside of this file and that is it right here okay this hash was given to us by the company of the same file of the same dd file what we just did was took our took a hash ourselves using the md5 calc uh, algorithm to compare it with what was provided. And it's the same thing. So this is not a malicious file. Cool. Gonna go ahead and score that. All right, we're gonna go ahead and go to the next section. Now we're gonna use this NSRL, right? Before we go there, before I even talk about it, let's go ahead and CD to this directory, right? We're gonna CD to the user share windows resources binaries directory over here we have a bunch of different programs a bunch of different tools mark our progress 
Now there's specifically specifically a program called Netcat, NC.exe. Netcat is one of my favorite pen testing tools. It's also known as the Army Swiss knife. I'm not gonna spend too much time on it now, right? So what we're gonna do is create a hash of this Netcat tool, right? Instead of using MD5, we're gonna use SHA-1, which is another hashing algorithm. So we're gonna do SHA-1 sum netcat.exe, right? That's the hash right there, but we're gonna put it inside of a file. We're gonna put it inside of a file called hash the netcat dash hash txt or nc dash hash txt. All right, so all we did was just put this inside of this file. All right, cool. Now we're gonna open up that file to see what's in it, right? We've already know what's in it because we did it right here without storing the output in a file. And those are the hash results. All right, we're gonna score that. Now what we're going to do is take that hash, right? We're going to take this hash and upload it into this database, right? We're going to upload it into a database called NSLR. I believe I'm pronouncing that right or NSRL. We're going to upload it into this database. I already have it open for us. And that's what we're going to do here. All right. So this hash, I'm going to copy this. Well, no, not that hash this hash right this is the hash that we just took of the netcat program right you can see that right here it's the same hash right here this is the hash that we just took from the netcat program we're going to upload it into the database and see what they say about this hash this is a, a a national database that stores thousands of different programs their hashes and, and whether the programs or the hashes are malicious all right so we're, we just stored it here you can either put the md5 algorithm that you get you can put the SHA-1 hash or you can just put the name of the file so let's search this you can see that we're getting a bunch of hits on this file right even netcat.exe 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 bunch of different hits on this file you all bunch of bunch of different hits you can see the product name you can see the manufacturer name who created the program you can see when it was created or updated like the different versions they have there's a bunch of different hits in this database. If we hit this magnifying glass, we can get the same information here, right? The hash algorithm, the SHA hash algorithm, netcat, the file size, right? You can verify to make sure your file size is the same. This is the manufacturer, the person who made it, the product. This is their version number, right? Some more information about that. So let's come back over here. Question. What is the value listed as the manufacturer for Netcat? It is offensive security. Cool. Now we're gonna keep going down, keep going down. Now we're gonna do a search on the file name, right? Instead of searching off of the hash, we can do a search off of the file name. So I'm just gonna close this. I'm gonna go back to new search, click here. And I'm gonna reset everything. And I'm just gonna put the file name netcat.exe. Hit enter. If we can get some more hits off of the file name and here are different hashes by their product, I mean manufacturer and product name. So you can verify that you have a legitimate file. I'm going to go back. We're going to do it again for Notepad. Same thing. We have Notepad hashes. These are good hashes. If you want to make sure or validate that the hash you have of Notepad, right, or the program you have of Notepad is legitimate, go and grab the hash of your program and compare it with one of these. Okay, and here's another hash of another program called keylogger.exe. All right, this is a keylogger program. I'm gonna go back here, reset. And I believe that was the SHA-1 hash of keylogger. Hit search and we can see all of the different hashes. These are offensive security tools that you can use. Keylogger is a, a program you can download and install it on someone's computer and it will start capturing their keystrokes. But how do you know if you have the right Keylogger EXE? Well, you can check databases like the NSRL. All right, that's it. So let's go into salting. That's it for hashing and verifying the integrity of a program using hashes. We're gonna go into salting. Salting is what we would do to make our passwords stronger. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is use CD and this curly dash right here. So it's gonna be shift and then the key under your escape button right here. Let me show you. 
is going to be this button right here. Shift, you're gonna hold shift and then this, right? Shift and then this. But you're gonna do that on your keyboard to get that curly. All right, that's gonna take us back to our home directory. I'm gonna clear my screen and now we're gonna grab our password file for passwords. We're using this command. You're gonna use the, the single, single quote, not the double quote, the single quote. It's the same key, but use the single quote, not, not this, same key, use this. Grab forward slash dollar sign single quote. And we want to look inside of the Etsy shadow file. Etsy shadow, the shadow file is the file that we use to store passwords in Linux. As you can see, your passwords are in cipher text, they're not plain text. Everything after this last dollar sign is your password, right? This would be the password, but it's not in clear text. It is in cipher text, so it's not readable. Why do we do it like this? Just in case someone compromises your system, they can't see your passwords, right? They can only see the cipher, okay? Now, this is the salt, right? This is the salt that's being added to your clear text password, right? So your computer knows the salt that's being added to your clear text password. So let's say your password, your clear text password is God rules. This salt we have highlighted is going to be added to this plain text password and then all of it together will be hashed to give us this. All right, cool. So what we're gonna do is create our own password, but we're not gonna add a salt to it. So let's create a password and we're gonna see how easy it is to brute force a password that is not salted. Right, we're gonna use a weak. Uh, we're gonna use a password called Pass One. It is a weak password, and we're gonna store that inside of a text file called hash.txt. So what we just did, we created a hash of our password called Password One. We're using the Open SSL command to create a password hash. Okay, this is we're creating a password hash, and we're using this salt argument to add a salt right now there's nothing in our salt right we just gave it quote quote right that means nothing there we're not using a salt and this is the password so we're saying hey open ssl we want to do a password hash this is the salt that we're well this is the salt we're providing we're not providing any salt this is the password and we want you to store the output of that hash inside of a file called hash.txt cool and we can see that those results now what we're going to do is use a password cracker called john John is a password cracker that can also try to crack hashes, right? So we're going to use John to try to crack the hash in this file, right? This is the hash right here. It shouldn't take John too long to crack it since it's a weak password and we aren't using to, uh, no, we're not salting it either. So it shouldn't take John too long and it did. It cracked it here. It's giving us back the password. It took our hash file and said, hey, here is the password the clear text password of that hash. So we're gonna do the same thing again. But this time what we're gonna do, oh, I skipped it. We're gonna do the same thing again, but this time we're gonna do is add a salt to it. So we're gonna do open SSL. I'm gonna use the same command right here. I'm just gonna put the word salt inside of it. Okay, the same thing. It's the same command here, right? We're gonna do open SSL. Hey, open SSL, we wanted to create a password hash on our password called password one, but we wanna add a salt called, called salt to it. So it's gonna take this password and the salt, combine them together. So it's gonna be pass one salt, and then it's gonna hash everything together. So it's gonna take that pass one, and then the word salt, and then it's gonna hash everything together. If we hit enter, this is what that looks like, right? The password plus the salt hashed together looks like that. So we're gonna decrypt this, right? We're, we're gonna try to use John to, to break this. The thing is, John will be able to break this because even though we gave it a salt, John will be able to break this John will be able to break this. I'll show you why in a second. All right, we're gonna do John, same thing, incremental, right? That's the incremental function we're gonna use and we're going to give it the salted hash text that we just created, right? This text. The reason John is able to break it, you can see the password is clear text. 
is because inside of the salted hash text, we told John what the salt is. All right, you can see it right there. We told John what the salt is. Remember, this right here is the password and the salt combined as a hash. This right here is the salt that you use with your clear text password. We told John what it is in this file. So let's remove it, right? We're gonna remove it from that file. All right, let me score this again. All right, so we're gonna remove the salt from that file. We're gonna do that with this said command, right? Set is what we can use to remove things from a file. I'm gonna clear my screen. I'm gonna do cat salted, right? That's gonna do that. It's gonna output the results of what's inside of this file, but we wanna output it to the said command so that said can remove the word salt with nothing. That's what's going on right here. We're removing the word salt with nothing. And we're gonna save the output to a file called salt secret hash.txt. Now, if we look at the salt secret, let's look at these two different files. Here's the password with the, here's the, the hash file, the hash, the password hash. This is the password hash with the salt inside of it. This is the password hash without the salt. So now if we give John this hash, it'll be very difficult for it to try to crack it. It actually won't crack it. It'll take a very long time. Whoops. Oops. Secret dash hash. So John is not going to be able to crack this, right? Because it doesn't know the salt. We have a very weak password, but John will still not be able to crack this because it does not know the salt of our password, right? It'll actually take John how long? I think it mentions it. It'll take John 25 years to try to crack this password unless we had a very fast computer, right? It would take John 25 years to try to crack his password. I'm gonna cancel it so our computer doesn't go crazy. You can see the memory uh, usage is spiking up, the CPU usage is gonna go back down as I cancel it. To cancel it, we're gonna hit Control C. But check this out. Quick recap, salted passwords. Here's a password called God Rules, right? Your passwords are not stored in plain text. They are stored as a hash, right? If you hash it, let's say you use MD5, it doesn't matter what you use, you're gonna get some type of hash. That's the hash, all right? This is kind of easy to crack if you have a weak password. So how do we make it stronger? We take the password and we add, that's a plus sign, we add a salt. The salt can be any character, right? And then we hash all of this together. We're gonna get a longer hash, all right? That salting your password makes it harder to brute force. It makes your hashes harder to compromise. All right, what is the purpose of calculating a hash file? This is for detecting integrity. What is the benefit of salting password hashes? Increases resistance to brute force attack. What is the primary reason to avoid the use of MD5? Collisions, MD5, the main reason why we don't use, why some people are reluctant to use an MD5 is because they produce a collision, right? A collision is when two different inputs that you hash give you the same output. If that doesn't make sense, if you need that to be broken down from a hands-on perspective, please register for our Security Fundamentals Academy. That's what that is for, right? It's more than just a Security Plus course. The NSLR can be, NSRL can be searched using file names and hatches for what? Right, for hacker tools, for application files, for OS files. I mean, up uh, malware. Wait, there we go. Wait, everything. <laughs> it's everything, it's everything, it's everything. You can search for everything, 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 everything in the NSRL. When using NSRL to search for suspicious files, what information can be used to determine if there are file name collisions in the database? Well, we can use the file name, we can use the product version, and we can use the hash value. Okay, we cannot use the operating system name. And that is it, you all. If you enjoyed this lab, please don't forget to leave the submit, hit, hit that like button, y'all. Slap, 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 slap the like button. Make sure you subscribe, leave us a comment, let us know how we did. Let us know what we can do better. And we'd love to learn with you, hear from you, talk to you. See you soon. Peace.